My research focuses on getting fresh water, getting drinking water at a lower cost. And that's really important because uh, around the globe, but also just in the United States, there are water shortages. It's not that there isn't enough water everywhere. There are floods in some cities, but then there are droughts in other cities. So what's really important is getting the water to the location where the people need it. And one way you can do that is taking seawater, which has salt in it, and removing the salt and creating fresh water and creating drinking water, creating water for plants, for industry, for manufacturing, and for people to drink and shower and flush their toilets with. Um, well, the way that desalination, which is taking the salt water out of the, the salt out of the salt water, the way it works right now is using a membrane, and it's called a reverse osmosis membrane. And what that means is that there's a membrane that's semi-permeable, and you force water at very high pressure against that membrane to make the water go through, but the salt cannot. And so you get fresh water out on the other side. The problem with today's membranes is that they tend to be really fragile. They break if anything besides water and salt touch them, they degrade pretty quickly, um, and they be kind of become a headache for the people operating the plants. So what we're trying to do is make a much more robust and, and like strong membrane that allows us to push more stuff through the membrane, push it faster, and push it with lower energy so that we can have lower cost desalination. Nanotechnology is a really broad field. It can apply to everything from water filtration, to the chips inside your computer or your cell phone, to cosmetics and sunscreen. What it really means is doing engineering on the scale of a nanometer. There are 100,000 nanometers in one diameter of a strand of hair. So it's really small. And to, to, to do engineering on that scale, you need very specialized equipment, very specialized tools, and very specialized microscopes. And that's why it's such an interesting field. Our nano membranes are made out of graphene oxide, which is made from graphite, which is the lead in your pencils. We use chemistry on the graphite to make graphene oxide flakes, and then we assemble those flakes uh, into a membrane. And they're nanomembranes because the space between the flakes is one and a half nanometers. And that space is what allows us to separate things like large salts and other contaminants from water and other, other streams. There's a really good reason why I learned the periodic table. <laughs> chemistry, I, I haven't taken a chemistry class in 10 years since the freshman, my freshman year of college, and yet I use it every single day. Um, so nobody told me it would be so important. I wish they had. <laughs> the fun thing about my job is that there is no such thing as a typical day. Every day is completely different. So today I woke up, I did a few emails, I ate breakfast, and then I got dressed and I attended a conference today. And the conference was on uh, the manufacturing of drugs and the, tech the technical details associated with manufacturing drugs. Uh, tomorrow, I'll wake up and I'll be working with students on their mechanical engineering product design, and so my day tomorrow will look a lot different than my day today. On Wednesday, I'm getting on a plane and I'm flying to San Francisco to attend an event in San Francisco where I'll be meeting with potential investors, so I'll have to be a little more formal on that day. Um, and then on Friday, I'm flying back and I plan to spend my whole plane ride writing a grant proposal. So every day this week looks a lot different than the day before. <laughs> I love learning and I love that every day is like a new, uh, a new skill, a new adventure, a new thing that I haven't done before. And so that's something that I kind of figured out was the best part. I like building things physically as well as kind of organizationally and I like learning new things. And so I'm kind of trying to follow a career path that allows me to do that every single day. There are a lot of different engineering disciplines. Mechanical engineering is just one of them, and there's a lot of variety even within just mechanical engineering. Environmental engineering typically focuses on the uh, study of natural systems and how people affect those natural systems. Uh, civil engineering tends to be more focused on building structures uh, or, or you know, homes and schools and skyscrapers. Material science is a really interesting engineering discipline. A lot of people don't know what it is, and I didn't know what it was really until just a couple of years ago. Um, and material engineering is uh, being able to modify materials which everything we have, our clothes, our buildings, our, our 
you know, computers and cell phones are all made out of materials. And being able to engineer materials to do what you want them to do uh, really kind of sets a foundation for a lot of different things that we interact with every single day. Mechanical engineering is designing and building products and systems that allow you to do what you want to do. And so that could be everything from designing a part to a car to designing parts of an iPhone. Those are all fall under mechanical engineering. There are a lot of different uh, subjects within mechanical engineering. Some people are good at mechanical design, some people are good at machining, some people are good at thermodynamics and heat transfer, and some people are good at systems engineering. And you don't have to be good at all of them because there's uh, something interesting in each of those that's really important. When I first got to college, I had no idea what mechanical engineering was. I thought I wanted to be an environmental engineer because I wanted to save the environment. So environmental engineering made a lot of sense. Uh, when I got to college and I started looking at what the classes were that people had to take for environmental engineering versus other types of engineering, I realized that what I really wanted to do was build things and design things to help people be sustainable and to help people be environmentally friendly. I didn't care as much about the soil cycle or the water cycle as I cared about helping people interact with the soil cycle or the water cycle. I switched into mechanical engineering. I had periods of time where I absolutely hated it. My first robotics class was a terrible semester and I really just thought I wasn't supposed to be an engineer. And then I had periods where I absolutely loved it. And when I was doing product design and I was thinking about people interacting with technology and with um, different types of technology, that was the part that really kind of made me want to be an engineer. Engineering is a really interesting subject and you can make it into anything you want. So that's one of the, one of the perks of being an engineer. Uh, you are very, uh, it's very flexible. So you can do a lot of things with an engineering degree. One of the nice things is that you don't necessarily need a master's or a PhD. And so you can do a four year degree and be extremely employable. Um, and you can do things in all sorts of different industries. You could be working in a lab, you could be working in a car shop, you could be sitting at a desk doing work, and those are all engineering jobs uh, that are out there. So I just finished a PhD, and uh, the most challenging part of that was working alone and working uh, in isolation in the lab or on the data analysis. I love engaging with people, and I get my energy from talking to people, and so uh, many days in a row of being alone was, was tough for me to stay motivated. Um, and that's one of the things I'm most excited about, about my transition and my new job right now, is that I get to engage with people all day, every day, and it's a lot more fun that way. The most important thing is to stay in your science and math classes. Um, that's really important because they lay the foundation for what can eventually become engineering. Um, and even if you don't like things like chemistry or geometry, which were two of my least favorite subjects in high school, it turns out they're really important and that I have to use them almost every single day. And so I think that had I kind of quit when I didn't like geometry in ninth grade, it would have really uh, hindered my ability to use it when it actually mattered later on. No technology exists away from people. Um, so you can think about a cell phone or a computer is very much people interacting with technology. And technology has the biggest impact when people know how to use it and people want to use it and people can afford to use it. And so uh, understanding that it's not all about the scientific discovery, but it's also about marketing a product or uh, giving people access to a product, that's sort of the part that gets me really excited. Sustainability is using the resources we have in the wisest way possible. So that could mean using less electricity in your home, it could mean using less water uh, in your shower, or it could be developing a way to get those resources in a more uh, environmentally friendly way. So one example of that could be uh, getting solar energy, uh, using energy from the sun to turn into electricity instead of using coal and burning coal and putting a lot of other stuff into the environment before you get your electricity. 
there are a lot of ways to get involved and to be sustainable. You don't have to be a college student. You don't even have to uh, be a high school student. You could recycle your bottles and cans at home. You can think about where your electricity is coming from. You can encourage, you can read online a little bit and teach your family about what it means to separate your plastics from the aluminum cans or what it means to uh, take a shorter shower or close the tap while you're brushing your teeth. E each of these little things makes a really big difference when, you, when everybody's doing it together.